Are you using land records to tackle your genealogy brick walls? In today's video, I'm going to show you some of the discoveries I made in land records that helped me progress my research. By so doing, I know that you'll be able to discover how to utilize the clues from land records to tackle your own research problems. Come along and research over my shoulder. Thus far in my brick wall busting series, I have researched in a lot of documents. City directories, my personal favorite. I have looked in early census records. I have conducted um, naming tradition research using online trees and descendancy research. There are so many things that we've already covered. So now it's time to turn to dirt. <laughs> the records about transferring land is almost invaluable because a lot of times you will find relationships and you will find residences and you can track your ancestors from place to place in that way. If you've missed my previous video about the benefits of researching and land records on family search, be sure you check out the link in the description for that video or wait for the pop-up screen at the end of the video. But let's talk about what clues I'm looking for in my brick wall case, and maybe it will help you when you're trying to figure out what am I trying to discover in land records. So I am trying to identify John Townley in Cincinnati, or, or rather Hamilton County, Ohio land records. I am also looking for Effingham Townley in land records. I'm going to be looking for him in Elizabethtown, or rather Essex County, New Jersey, particularly looking for that city, Elizabethtown. That's where I'm looking. The question is, what am I looking for? Well, in Cincinnati land records, here are a couple of things I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find any connection to Elizabethtown, New Jersey for John Townley. If you bought land when he first arrived in Cincinnati, it will likely tell me John Townley of Elizabethtown, New Jersey is buying land in Hamilton County, Ohio. I'm going to try to determine what, when he first bought his property. So not only was I trying to look for are there any clues to where he came from? But I want to see how early he bought his land to see if it fits the timeline that I'm creating for John. Finally, I am still looking for those likely cousins, George W. Townley and Major J. Townley, who came from Elizabethtown, New Jersey as well. I am pretty confident they are not brothers and they are not first cousins, but what if they cross paths in land records? Perhaps that can help me get some more clues as to just how John is related to George and Major, which may help me find clues to who John's father is. In Elizabethtown, New Jersey, I'm also going to be looking for evidence of John who moved to Cincinnati. Now, I just moved from Houston, Texas to New Mexico, and I'm selling a property after I moved to New Mexico, so I would have a record trail that told people where I moved to. I'm hoping that John sells some land after he moved to Cincinnati, and the records in Elizabeth says John of Cincinnati, Ohio, is selling land in Elizabethtown, New Jersey. That would be really, really golden. But I also need to leave John and keep researching this theory of his, his father is Effingham. I want to see if he sells any land um, either while he is living or as part of his probate estate that says that land is transferred to his son, John Townley of Cincinnati, Ohio. That would be kind of handy. So there's a lot of things that you're looking for in land records other than just trying to find the name of your ancestor in a time and place, particularly when you're working on a brick wall. Every clue has to be explored if you're going to finally bust through it. Since Ohio became part of the Northwest Territory in about the 18, early 1800s, about 1803, 
The land transfers in the 1830s are going to be primarily at the county level. An original buyer had bought it from the state or the federal entity, and now the transactions are happening between individuals at the local level. So I'm going to be looking for deed records in Hamilton County, Ohio. The next thing I did which I'm not gonna show in this video, but I do have tracked a little bit in my research plan, is that I looked for every grantor and every grantee in the land record indexes with the name John Townley or some variation. I wanted to make sure I did an exhaustive research, but unfortunately, with my luck on my family tree, there were only a handful of documents to look at. Go figure. So the first document I have is from 1845. This is the first record I have of him buying land. In a previous video, I said that he arrived in Cincinnati about 1834, 1833 because of him being in the 1834 city directories. So on this document, I gathered a lot of information. I know that the property is located on the south side of Barr Street near Cutler and Lynn Street in the Barris subdivision. So I can use this information, go back into land records, look for the original plots, looking for the original land designations to ensure I find that place on a map. Because Barr Street and another street that becomes kind of confusing with Barr Street, they are not on modern maps and they're very difficult to find on contemporary maps in 1845 through 1889. So I would then have to go look for this Barris subdivision to better understand how that property was put together. Don't have enough time to talk about that in this video, but it is something I have done in my research. The other thing I gathered from this document is that the purchase price was about $375. Finally, Lucky me, the document does say that Richard and Myra Bodley, the people who John is buying this property from, it says they're from Cincinnati, but they don't say where John is from. By now, he's from Cincinnati. <laughs> oh, go figure. So this record provides evidence of the purchase of the Bar Street property. John willed this property to his daughter, Eliza Townley Woodruff, and his son, Richard Townley in his will of 1889. Now, the city directories of 1840 state that John is living in Van Horn. I alluded to another property or another street name. So Van Horn cannot be found on a modern map. I have trouble finding it on a map in the past. I can find Bar Street, and I've um, found that it is on this map near the number 17, just to the lower left corner. So between Cutler and Lynn Street, there's a Bar Street. And on a matter mat, it's kind of disappeared. So in my research plan, I have anal analyzed this property purchase along with John's property purchase on Van Horn Street in 1855. The Van Horn property was, the, was also part of the William Barr lands, which is probably why there's so much confusion. While well, he bought a property on Barr Street, Van Horn is also part of the William Barr land, and it's all roughly in the same area, and that leads to the confusion. So at the end of researching in Cincinnati, Ohio, I came to a couple of conclusions. Number one, I am not lucky. <laughs> okay, that's not really what I came to the conclusion is. The first thing that I discovered is John Townley did not have any documents that ties him back to Elizabethtown, New Jersey, in the land records. Dang it. <laughs> the next thing I discovered was the earliest um, opportunity that John bought land was some 10 years or more after he moved to Cincinnati. So that tells me that he is in an economic situation that isn't the best when he first arrives. But when he works as a bricklayer, he does acquire money so that he can then eventually purchase the property. Finally, I researched George and Major Townley, and I didn't find any clues that connect George, Major, and their other brother, Edward, who arrived in Cincinnati, to John Townley. 
It would have been so nice if they crossed paths at least once so that I could then put together a family tree of some kind. But that was not to be the case. Now it's time to turn my attention to land records in New Jersey. Thankfully, New Jersey, while it is a colonial state, they now, in the 1830s, 200 years after the formation of New Jersey, they are doing most of their records at the county level. I did two things with the grantor and grantee index, and thankfully, I'm working with just one surname, so it wasn't that challenging. I was looking for all of the Johns and Jonathans and variations, and I was looking for Effingham Townleys as well. In a previous video about probates, I had mentioned that Effingham had uh, named his executors Richard Townley and John Townley. Now I found the le land record that handles the estate of a property being sold from that estate to someone outside of the family. Now, you don't always have land records if a will transfers property. You do have land records when property from an estate is sold to somebody outside of the family. So in this case, there was a document where Richard Townley, the executor of Will of Effingham Townley, is selling the property. Now, Richard's location, his residence is named as Elizabethtown, New Jersey. The property is in Elizabethtown, New Jersey. And John is mentioned that he is one of the executors, but his residence is never stated. And it seems that Richard is handling all of the details. So what does that suggest? Well, I believe and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I am okay to other insights. I believe that John is not in Elizabethtown, New Jersey. He is somewhere, or he has died. But if he had died, they would have said he was deceased in this document. So he's alive somewhere, and that somewhere is not in Elizabethtown, New Jersey. Now, this record was created in December 1833, and that's right in that range where a city directory individual would have canvassed Cincinnati to include John in the 1834 city directory. We can theorize, we can't prove, we can theorize that John is en route to Cincinnati or he's in Cincinnati and Richard doesn't know where he is at this time there's lots of theories. Share your theories with me as to why his residence would not be included in the land records when Richard's is. I did find it interesting that Richard is selling this land for $350. Now, if there was a record that John bought land in Cincinnati for $350, that would make my spidey senses tingle. Wouldn't it make yours? Well, but John takes and spends $375 about 10 years later to buy property in Cincinnati. Maybe he's wrenching trying to figure out where he wants to stay in city directories. He's not consistent in his location until about the 1840 time period. So maybe he is looking around and testing out properties before he commits to settling down. And then he has $375 and he puts it into the property. Good theory, interesting fact, can't prove it, but it's really nice to walk through the likely scenarios. So in reviewing land records and my goals, I wasn't entirely unsuccessful, but I didn't find the golden ticket that would have solved all of my research question. So I did find that there was a property transfer with Effingham and John, but I don't have enough evidence that that John is the John that moved to Cincinnati. I also searched Johns in Elizabethtown, New Jersey, or in Essex County, because he could have been anywhere in Essex County, and I didn't find any records that stated there was a John in Cincinnati selling his land. Finally, I did investigate George and Major Townley, and I did find that in about 1834, they sold property. And just to let you know that I'm not crazy with uh, clerks writing out where people move to and they're selling their um, property in another location, George and Major 
do have their location of Cincinnati recorded in the land records in Elizabethtown, New Jersey. So there is a habit of recording where people move to, where they're residing at the time a land purchase is taking place. But unfortunately for me, I didn't get that residence information for John that I was looking for. So let's look at the clues that I have gathered for Effingham Townley of Elizabethtown, New Jersey, and a John Townley of Cincinnati, Ohio, to see if the John in Effingham's will is the John that moved to Cincinnati. Well, I do know that Effingham died in 1828. His estate doesn't go through a probate sale until 1833. Now, John and his family, the, the construction of the John's family in the 1840 census in Cincinnati looks very similar to the um, John Townley is in Elizabethtown, New Jersey in 1830. So I feel like I have got John Townley to Elizabethtown, New Jersey. His first appearance in Cincinnati seems to be that 1834 city directory. He's the only other city directory I was able to find for that location was 1831. So I'm missing 1832 and the published one in 1833, which is, would have helped me identify where John would have been. So I'm theorizing that based on this timeline, it is entirely possible that John is the son of Effingham Town, New Jersey. There is an Effingham who has a son named John, that John is mentioned on a land transfer in 1833. And then we have a little bit more research to do, but if I can't find any more documentation of John that doesn't de definitively state that he died, then he, chances are he moved and thus far, I'm thinking he moved to Cincinnati. Make sure you check out our blog post that has the show notes for this video. Look at my genealogy research plan and let me know if you have any further questions or if you think I've made a mistake along the way. That is the power of peer reviewing. Stick around for more videos in this series to either get caught up or see the next video in this playlist. Check out this video right there. And if you're ready for our latest video, Check this one right here.